हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई इंग्लिश क्लास आई एम ज्योति सिंह एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द चैप्टर रंगाज मैरिज फ्रॉम द बुक स्नैप शॉट्स ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड इलेवेंथ एंड दिस चैप्टर इज रिटन बाय मस्ती वेंकटेशा आयंगर हेयर इज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस स्टोरी दिस द स्टोरी रिवॉल्व अराउंड रंगा द अकाउंटेंट सन हु गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गो आउट ऑफ द विलेज टू स्टडी द नैरेटर टेक्स यू थ्रू अ जर्नी where he changes ranga's perception about marriage the entire story involves funny instances and reference for the narrator has made sure your mind stays occupied with the story now let's read the story ranga the accountant's son is one of the rare breed among the village village folk who has been to the street, to the city to pursue his studies ranga was the son of the accountant of the village and he was the rare breed because he went to the city to pursue his studies in english medium when he returned to returns to his village from the village from the city of bangalore the crowd mill around his house to see whether he has changed or not his ideas about marriage are now quite different or are they when ranga returned to his village from the city of bangalore the people of the village came to see her came to see him whether he has changed or not but the ideas of marys but the ideas of ranga about marys are now quite different when you see this title some of you may ask ranga's marriage why not rangnatha vivaha or rangnatha vijaya well yes i know i could have use some other mouth filling one like jagannatha vijaya or girija kalyanam but then this is not about jagannatha's victory or girija's wedding it is almost our own ranga's marriage and hence no fancy title vivaha means marriage and vijaya means victory and girija a female and kalyana means beautiful lovely or species in sanskrit and The narrator expects the readers to be questioning the simplicity of the title Ranga's marriage. The narrator feels readers might be thinking of fancier title like Rangnatha Vivaha or Rangnatha Vijaya or Girija Kalyana. He cl- the narrator clarifies that although he had option of keeping such elaborate names the reason why he chose the basic and casual one is because the sto- because the story is about ranga as in someone who is very close and dear to him next hoshali is our village you must have heard of it no what a pity but it is not your fault there is no mention of it in any geography book those sahibs in england sahibs means a polite title form of address for a man and sahib used for the britishers those sahibs in england writing in, in english probably do not know that such a place exist and so make no mention of it our own people to forget about it you know how it is they are like a flock of sheep when she walks into a pit the rest blindly follow it when both the sahibs in england and our own geographers have not referred to it you cannot expect the poor cartographer to remember to put it on the map can you and so there is not even the shadow of our village on any map then the narrator says that they live in a village which is called hoshali and is situated in masho not many people know of it and the narrator doesn't bl- blame them because there is no trace of it in the geography book even the englishman have no idea about the place but they are also not to blame because our citizens too are completely ignorant about the village he refers to the people as sheep who blindly follow each other and do not use their logic or brain to justify or invent things at last he feels that the cartographer is also not to be held responsible 
as a result there is no trace of their village on the map further sorry i started somewhere and then went off in another direction if the state of mysore is to bharat vansha what the sweet kari kariga jabu is to be is to a festive meal then hoshali is to mysore state what the feeling is to the kari dabu further he says that the word karida dabu means a sweet a south indian fried sweet filled with coconut and sugar what i have said is absolutely true believe me i will not object to your questioning it but i will sit, stick to my opinion i am not the only one who speaks glowingly of hoshali we have a doctor in our place his name is gunda bhatta he agrees with me he has been to quite a few places no not england if anyone ask him whether whether he has been there he says no ananya ananya in kannad a respectful term for an elder i have left that to you running around like a flea pestered dog flea pestered dog means a flea pestered dog does not stick to one place but keeps roaming everywhere and flap pestered means being infested by fleas and ticks which can cause uncontrollable itching in animals then is not for me i have seen a few places in my time though as a matter of fact he has seen many in this passage the narrator feels apologized because he thought that he thought that he start this chapter in a different way and then he again throws light upon the significance of his village hoshali he says it is just as important as mysore is to india and kariga dabu to a festive meal and filling it to kariga dabu thus he cannot highlight its importance any more not only him but the doctor named gunda bhatta feels the same the doctor has been to many places except england but he still loves hoshali however an outsider might contest this put this but the narrator claims to stick to his opinion of the place further we have some mango trees in our village come visit us and i will give you a raw mango from one of them do not eat it just take a bite the soreness is sure to be to go straight to your bharat brahmandra brahmandra means in kannada in kannada language the soft part in a child's head where skull bones join join later here used as an idiomatic expression to convey the extreme potency of soreness and in sanskrit brahmandra means the whole of brahman it is the dwelling house of the human soul further i once took one such fruit home and a chutney was made out of it all of us ate it the cough we suffered from after that it was when i went for the cough medicine that the doctor told me about the special quality of the fruit then the narrator tells tells us about their special mango trees in the village and these mangoes are famous for their special quality the quality is that they these fruits are very sour and and the narrator said that once took the fruit at home to make chutney and everyone suffered from a bad cough after eating it it was only when he went to see the doctor that he told him about the quality of mangoes of hoshali the narrator asked the readers to take a bite and assures that the soreness of the mango will be felt by them till the top of their head then just as the mango is special so is everything else around our village we have a creeper growing in the ever so fine water of the village pond 
इट्स फ्लावर्स आर अ फेस्ट टू बी होल्ड गेट टू लिवस फ्रॉम द क्रीपर्स वेन यू गो टू दॉन्ट फॉर योर बाथ एंड यू विल नॉट हैव टू वरी अबाउट एनी हैविंग लिवस ऑन विच टू सर्व द आफ्टरनून मील यू विल से आई एम रेमलिंग इट इज ऑलवेज लाइक दैट वेन द सब्जेक्ट अवर ऑफ अवर विलेज कम्स अप बट इनफ इफ एनी वन ऑफ यूज वुड लाइक टू विजिट अस ड्रॉप मी अ लाइन आई विल लेट यू नो वेयर होशाली इज एंड वट थिंग्स आर लाइक है द बेस्ट वे ऑफ गेटिंग टू थ्रू अ प्लेस इज टू विजिट इट डोंट यू एग्री एंड देन बी होल्ड मीन्स सी और ऑब्जर्व एंड रैम्बलिंग मीन्स इन द राइटिंग स्किल लेंथी एंड कन्फ्यूज एंड देन द राइटर द नरेटर सैड नॉट ओनली द मैंगोज एवरीथिंग इन एंड अराउंड दिस विलेज इज रिमार्केबल एंड द क्रीपर्स ग्रोइंग इन द पॉन्ट and its flowers are also special and one can even serve an afternoon meal on its leaves all you need to do is to grab two leaves when you are on your way to the pond to bath after speaking highly of his village the narrator sees says if anyone wishes to see for himself or herself one must contact him he will help them to reach there also he feels that there is no better better way to know a place than to visit it then what i am going to tell you is something that happened 10 years ago we did not have many people who knew new english then our village accountant was the first one who had enough courage to send his son to bangalore to study it is different now there are many who know english during the holidays you come across them on every street talking in english in those days we did not speak in english nor did we bring in english words while talking in kannada then the narrator brings about a comparison that how things were different 10 years ago when not many people knew or spoke english neither did people send their children to big cities like bangalore to study only the village accountant had the courage to send his son to bangalore according to the narrator those times were simpler he justifies his claims by telling an incident that what happens is disgraceful believe me the other day i was in rama rao's house when they bought a bundle of firewood rama rao's son came out to pay for it he asked the woman how much should i give you four piece four paise she said the boy told her he did not have any change and asked her to come the next morning the poor woman did not understand the english word change and went away muttering to herself i too did not know later when i went to ranga's house and asked him i understood what it meant and then the narrator then the narrator telling us an incident where he was at rama rao's house and they had just bought a bundle of firewood from an old lady drama told her to come next morning as he did not have any change at the moment the poor old lady did not know what change means and she went away whispering to herself neither did the narrator knew its meaning it was only when he went to ranga's house that he told him this priceless commodity the english language was not so widespread in our village a decade ago that was why ranga's homecoming was a great event people rushed to his doorstep announcing the accountant's son has come the boy who had gone to bangalore for his studies is here it seems and come rang it seems and rang come ranga is here let's go and have a look and then the narrator explained however 10 years ago english was not commonly spoken in the village 
Bhoshali. When the villagers came to know that Ranga, the accountant's son, was coming home from Bangalore, who went for further stories, now returned. Everyone got excited and rushed to his home to have a glance at him. Further, attracted by the crowd, I too went and stood in the courtyard and asked, Why have all these people come? There is no performing monkey here. A boy, a fellow, without any brains, said, loud enough for everyone to hear. What are you doing here then? A youngster, immature and without any manners, thinking that all these things were now of the past. I kept quiet. Fascinating or attracted by the crowd, the narrator went there and asked people as to why they were gathered because he could not see anything entertaining happening there like a monkey performing. A boy without brains shouted loud, loud enough for everyone to hear and in a rude way the narrator called him immature. Then seeing so many people there. Ranga came out with a smile on his face. Had we all gone inside, the place would have turned into what people call the Black Hall of Calcutta. Thank God, it did not. Everyone was surprised to see that Ranga was the same as he had been six months ago. When he had first left our village, an old lady who was near him ran her hand over his chest looked into his eyes and said, The Janvara is still there. He hasn't lost his caste. She went away soon after that. Ranga laughed. Janvara in Kannan language, it means the sacred, the sacred thread borne by Brahmans or we can call Janeu. The narrator explained, explains all the people were waiting outside Ranga's house because the place would look like the Blake Hall of Calcutta. If they all went inside by saying this, the narrator means that there was there were so many people that the house would have fallen short to accommodate them all. Thus Ranga came outside with a smile on his face. Everyone was so amazed to see that Ranga had not changed a bit after he left six months ago. An old lady even went to the extent of running her hands through his chest to check for a sacred thread. However, she went away after confirming that he had not forgotten about his caste. Once they realized that Ranga still had the same friends, hands, legs, eyes and nose, the crowd melted away like a lump of sugar in a child's mouth. I continued to stand there. After everyone had gone, I asked, How are you, Rangappa? Is everything well with you? It was only then that Ranga's, Ranga noticed me. He came near me and did a namaskar respectfully saying I am all right with your blessing. When the villagers realized that Ranga did not change even after moving to the city they disappeared as fast as a lump of sugar does in a child's mouth. The narrator waited till the crowd cleared and asked him about his well-being. Ranga noticed him and replied with Full respect in a traditional way. Ranga had not noticed the narrator in the crowd before that moment. I must draw your attention to this aspect of Ranga's character. He knew when it would be to the advantage to talk to someone and rightly assessed, assessed people's worth. As for his namaskar to me, he did not do it like any present day boy with his head up towards the sun, standing stiff like a pole without joints, jerking his body as if it was either a vent, wand or a walking stick, nor did he merely fold his hands. He bent low to touch my feet. May you get married soon, I said, blessing him. After exchanging a few
few pleasantries i left then ranga was very well behaved and well aware as to who could benefit him he was one of those who could analyze someone's worth rightfully for how he greeted the narrator he bent low and touched his feet thereby speaking his blessing it was not the present day namaskara where children would do it casually it was a proper proper traditional one the narrator blessed him that he might get married soon and then the narrator left that afternoon when i was resting ranga came to my house with a couple of oranges in his hand a generous considerate fellow it would be a fine thing to have him marry settle down and be of service to society i thought that afternoon ranga visited the author with a few oranges which the narrator thought was quite thoughtful of him thinking of how nice ranga is the author thought it would be a good deed to have him married to a girl just as nice as him for a while we talked about this and that then i came to the point rangappa when do you plan to get married i am not going to get married now he said why not then both narrator and ranga chatted for a while and then the narrator asked ranga about his views on getting married and ranga expresses that he doesn't intend on marrying now because he intend on finding the right girl why not the narrator asked i need to find the right girl R- ranga replied i know an officer who got married only 6 months ago he is about 30 and his wife is 25 i am told they will be ab- able to talk lovingly to each other let's say i married a very young girl she may take my words spoken in love as words spoken in anger recently a troupe in bangalore stays the play shakuntala there is no question of dushyanta falling in love with shakuntala if she were young like the present day brides is there what would have happened to kalidas play if one gets married it would be to a girl who is mature otherwise one should remain a bachelor that is why i am not marrying now then ranga replied that he he need to find the right girl and ranga express then he cites the example of an ex- officer who get married at the age of 30 to a woman who who was 25 and now since these are both adult they would understand each other's actions and behavior where i suppose the narrator finds a girl who is very young she could misunderstand his words or actions because she is not mature enough he even mentions the love story of shakuntala and dushyanta from mahabharata and that she would not have fallen, fallen in love with shakuntala if she were if she were too young in that case kalidas play also would have not existed that is why he, he intends on staying a bachelor till he finds the right girl is there any other reason then the narrator asked is there any other reason a man should marry a girl he admires what we have now are arranged marriages how can one admire a girl with milk stains on one side of her face and wetness on the other or so young that she doesn't even know how to bite her fingers then the narrator then ranga express his views that he should marry a girl whom whom he admires and 
and he said one could not be a bitter guard or the second one is as a as a nymphro then then he said he cannot marry a girl who doesn't know even how to bite her fingers exactly ranga said laughing and then i was distressed that the boy who i thought would make a good husband had decided to remain a bachelor after chatting for a little longer ranga left i made up my mind right then that i would get him married after hearing this the narrator feels sad because he don't want because he doesn't want the boy who is able to a good husband wanted to remain a bachelor after a chatting for a little longer ranga left and the narrator made up his mind right then that he would get him married rama rao's niece a pretty girl of 11 had come to stay with him she was from a big town so she knew how to play the veena and the harmonium she also had a sweet voice both her parents had died and her uncle had brought her home ranga was just the boy for her and she the most suitable bride for him the narrator introduced the other character a new character ratna ratna who is 11 years old girl and is rama rao's niece she had lost both her parents so her uncle brought her from the big town to his home with him she had a great voice and could play harmonium and veena the narrator thought that ranga and ratna would make a great pair since i was a frequent visitor to rama rao's place the girl was quite free with me i completely forget to mention her name ratna it was the very next morning i went to their house and told rama rao's wife i will send some butter milk for you ask ratna to fetch it ratna was quite familiar with the narrator as he visited rama's place frequently the narrator thought of a plan to introduce ratna to ranga he asked rama to ask ratna to his place as he wanted to send some butter milk for him ratna came it was a friday so she was wearing a grand sari i told her to sit in my room and requested her to sing a song i sent for ranga while she was singing the song krishna murti in front of my eyes ranga reached the door he stopped at the threshold he did not want the singing to stop threshold means a strip of wood or stone forming the bottom of a doorway and crossed in entering a house or a room he did not want the singing to stop but was curious to see the singer carefully he peeped in the light coming into the room was blocked ratna looked up and seeing a stranger there abruptly stopped on friday ratna came to his house and he wore a grand sari the narrator told her to sit in his room and requested her to sing a song and he called ranga to while she was singing the song krishna murti in front of his eyes ranga reached the door and as he entered the threshold ranga stopped because he did not want the singing to be stopped but ranga was curious to see the singer and carefully he peeped in inside the house the light coming into the room was blocked because of ranga and then ratna looked up and seeing a stranger there she stopped suddenly suppose you buy the best quality mango you eat it slowly savoring its peel before biting into the juicy flesh you do not want to waste any part of it before you take another bite the fruit slips out of your hand and falls to the ground how do you feel ranga's face showed the same disappointment when the singing stopped 
and then then the narrator compares ranga's situation to the disappointment of dropping a best quality mango on the floor just before having to truly enjoy it it was as if something great had been stolen before one could fully enjoy it and then you sent for me he asked as he came in and sat on a chair ratna stood at the distance her head lowered ranga repeatedly glanced at her once our eyes met and he looked very embarrassed no one spoke for a long while ratna who stood at a distance and her head lowered ranga glanced at her when their eyes met he looked very embarrassed no one speak for a long while it was my coming in that stopped the singing let me leave then ranga said that it was his mistake he came and she stopped the singing leave him leave me words were mere words the fellow said he would leave but did not make a move how can one accept words to match action in these days of kalyug after a while ranga said that he feels it was his coming that stopped the singing so he must leave however he did not he only speak but he did not move a bit the narrator makes fun of him because he had no intention of going he jokes about it and says one cannot accept actions and words to match in the kalyu ratna rain inside overcome by shyness after a while ranga asked who is that girl swami when uh, when ratna rain inside overcome by shyness ranga asked to the narrator who is that girl who is that inside the lion wanted to know the he got who had taken shelter in the temple replied does it matter who i am i am a poor animal who has already eaten nine lions i have vowed to eat one more tell me are you male or female the lion fled the place in fear it seems after a few minutes of awkward silence ranga finally asked the narrator about the girl now the narrator compares the situation with the infamous story of the he got and the lion where is the he got and ranga the lion the narrator replies very cleverly and indents on seeing ranga's interest in knowing about ratna thus he says that who she is is not of that much importance because he is already married and ranga does not intend on marrying anything soon any time soon like the he got i said what does it matter to either of us who she is i am already married and you aren't the marrying kind and in these lines the narrator tells ranga that that girl is already married very hopefully he asked she isn't married then his voice did not betray his excitement but i knew it was there she was married a year ago then the narrator told him that that girl was married a year ago his face shriveled like a roasted brinjal after a while ranga left saying i must go i have work at home shriveled means shrunken or wrinkled especially as a result of loss of moisture and tutored means taught hearing the narrator's reply ranga got excited although he did not show it to, but was quite evident full of hope he asked if she isn't married yet to which the narrator replied that she is probably a year ago ranga was disappointed and disheartened 
It was clearly all over his face. He went away quitting some work. Our narrator having staged certain liking in the mind of Ranga for Ratna. Went on to complete his play. I went to the Sastri. To our Sastri. The next morning and told him, keep everything ready to read the stars. I will come later. I tutored him in all that I wanted him to stay. On the next morning, the narrator went to meet Sastri of the village and told him that had to be said and done. What the narrator told him everything that he had to be said to Ranga. Then he met Ranga that afternoon. I found no change in Ranga when I met him that afternoon. What is the matter? You seem to be lost in thought, I said. When the narrator met Ranga, he felt that there is no change. And he asked what was the matter. He was. The narrator feels that Ranga who is in a great grief and lost in the thoughts nothing nothing strong believe me and ranga replied that nothing has happened believe him headache come let's go and see a doctor then he said i think you are suffered from headache so let's go for a doctor i have no headache i am my as usual self and then ranga replied he have he has no headache he was his casual self. Here we stop this chapter explaining. We will continue it in the next video. Thank you for watching and hearing this video. Thank you.